Today, I'm going to show you how I created this simple counter using JavaScript. I'll go over the entire HTML structure and how I applied all of the styling with CSS. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a CodePen project. At the top of the HTML, I already have a link to the font family I'm going to use throughout this project. And then beneath that, I have body tags, which are empty. In the CSS, I already declared some root variables and then added some basic styling, like setting the box sizing set to border box and a margin and padding to zero. And the JavaScript is completely empty. In this video tutorial, I'm going to go over the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So to get started, I'm going to go into the body tags of the HTML. I'm going to include a header tag with an ID of counter. This will represent the number that we will see on the screen. So for right now, I'm just going to include a zero here because that will be the initial state. Then beneath that, I'm going to create a div that will hold the buttons. So I'm going to create a div with an ID of button wrapper. And within this button wrapper, I'm going to include two buttons. So one of them will be a decrease button and the other one will be an increase button. So in here, I'm going to include a button with an ID of button decrease and I'm going to include another button with an ID of button increase. So in order to see something on the screen, I'm going to include content here. So for the decrease, I'm going to include a minus symbol and for the increase, I'm going to include a plus symbol. So this is actually all of the HTML that we need for the project and everything else needs to be completed within CSS and within JavaScript. So first I'm going to apply some CSS so it looks a little bit better and then I'm going to add the interactivity within JavaScript. So first for that body, I'm going to add some properties here. So I'm going to set the display of it to flex. I'm going to set the flex direction to column. And I'm going to justify the content and align the items in the center. I'm also going to add a gap here of two REM. I'm going to set the height to 100% of the viewport height. And then I'm just going to add a background color and a color for the text. Next, I'm going to work on the styling for the counter. So here in the HTML, I gave it an ID of counter. So I'm going to reference that ID in the CSS. And I want this counter to be much larger on the page. So I'm just going to increase the font size to six REM. Next, I'm going to apply styling for this button wrapper. So I'm going to reference this ID in the CSS. I'm also going to set the display of flex for here as well. And I'm going to add a gap of one REM. Then still within this ID of button wrapper, I'm going to apply some other styling. Now, the reason why I can add styling within this ID is because I added a preprocessor of SCSS. So if you want to follow this exactly, you're going to need to add a preprocessor as well. So here I'm going to write and, and then the all selector, which basically means that I want to select all the children of this button wrapper. So this is just a faster way for me to say that anything within this container, I want to have the styling that I'm going to add right here. So within here, I'm going to set the border to none. I'm going to add a specific background color and box shadow. I'm going to set the font weight to bold and the font size to two REM. I'm going to set the color to inherit so that way it inherits the body color. I'm going to set the border radius to 50% so that way it will be a circle. And then I want to specify a specific height and width. I also want this to look interactive so I'm going to set the cursor to pointer. I'm going to remove the outline. And then I know I'm going to want to modify the hover state and the active state so I'm going to add a transition here for the background color and the transform property. So now we can see that it's definitely looking a bit better, but when I hover over the buttons or if I tap on them, it doesn't do anything. So it doesn't really feel like it is interactive. So next I'm going to add hover and active states. So still within this group, I'm going to write and hover and I'm going to modify the background color. And then I'm also going to include an active state 
And for this, I just want to transform the scale a bit. So now when I hover over it, there's a color change. And when I actually tap on it, there's a slight change in the scale. So this is actually looking pretty good so far. So now I'm going to jump into the JavaScript and add some functionality. So that way the number actually changes when I click on these buttons. So jumping into the JavaScript, first I have to create variables that represent the elements in the HTML. So that way we can monitor when users click on the buttons in the HTML and also monitor the value of the counter. So in the JavaScript, I have to create certain variables that represent these HTML elements. So in the JavaScript, first I'm going to create variables for the buttons and then for that counter. So here I'm going to write let decrease button, which basically creates a variable called decrease button in the JavaScript. And I want this decrease button to represent this button decrease in the HTML. So I'm going to refer to that element by writing document.getElementById and then referencing that ID. Then I'm going to create another one called increase button. And it is going to follow the same procedure. And then I'm going to create a counter, which will represent this H1. So the next thing I want to do is add event listeners for these buttons, which basically means I want to pay attention when the user taps the minus button and when the user taps the plus button. So over here, I'm going to reference these variables and I'm going to add an event listener. So first I'm going to write decrease button, add event listener, and then we have to indicate what kind of event we want to listen to. Well, I want to listen to when that button is clicked. So here I'm going to write click. And then the next thing I'm going to write is the function that I want to execute when that button is clicked. So here I'm going to include an arrow function and I'm just going to place all the code within here. So just to make sure that this is actually working, first I'm just going to write console log and then I'm going to write the word decrease. So we can basically check if this is working. So over here in CodePen, I have a little console button. So I'm just going to click that. And then here I'm going to click on the minus symbol. And then we can see that word decrease. So we know that this is working properly. So now we have to figure out how we are exactly going to write this code for this to actually work. So I have this H1 element at the top of the page, which right now is hard coded to be zero because that's exactly what I wrote in the HTML but I want this number to change when the user taps one of these buttons. So how are we going to make that happen? Well, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to create a variable that will represent that counter within the JavaScript. So it will be a number counter that will increase or decrease depending on the user's actions. And then I'm going to take that number and assign it to this H1 element. So that way it's constantly being updated. So within the JavaScript, I'm going to add another variable and I'm just going to call it count. And initially when this page loads, it's going to be set to zero. So at the beginning, I'm just going to say equal zero. So that's the initial state of this variable. Well, when the user taps on the decrease button, I want the value of count to decrease by one. So in here, I'm going to remove that console log and I'm going to write count minus minus which basically means reduce the count by one. And then to modify this H1 element so it represents this count, I'm going to monitor the counter value. So here I'm going to write counter, which again represents that H1 element. And I'm going to change the inner HTML of this to equal the value of count. So here I'm going to set it equal to count. So this is basically saying, take this H1 element that I already defined as a variable change the inner HTML to match this count variable. So if I tap on this minus, I'm assuming that this number is going to change. So if I tap on it, it changes. And when I continue to tap on it, it continuously decreases. So I know that this is working. So the next thing I'm going to do is add very similar functionality for the increase button. So here I'm going to say increase button. I'm going to add an event listener. It will be for a click. I'm going to add an arrow function that will increase the count. So here I'm going to write count plus plus. 
and then I'm also going to modify the inner HTML of that H1 element. So now let's see what happens. I click on this plus and now it goes up. And when I click on this minus, it goes down and now I can basically have full control over it. So now this counter completely works. So the last thing I'm going to do is add some styling to this. So when the number is positive, it has one treatment. And when the number is negative, it has a different color treatment. So within the JavaScript, I'm going to create a function and I'm going to call it counter style. And so I want this counter style to assign a certain class depending on the value of that count. So if the count is greater than zero, I want it to have one treatment. And if it's less than zero, I want it to have another treatment. So here I'm going to say, if the count is less than zero, I want to add a class to the counter. So here I'm going to write counter dot class list dot add, which basically just adds a class to this element. And I want the class to be called negative to represent that it is now a negative number. Now, if it's positive, I want it to have a different treatment. So I'm going to write else if the count is greater than zero, which means it's positive. I want to add another class called positive. Now, what happens if it's not positive and it's not negative? Well, it's zero in that case. So in the else statement here, how do I want it to look when it's equal to zero? Well, I actually want to remove the negative and the positive class. So that way it just goes back to the initial styling. So here I'm going to write counter dot class list dot remove. And I want to remove these other styles. So this is basically saying if the count is negative, I want to add this class of negative. If the count is positive, I want to add this class of positive. And if it's neither, if it's zero, I want to remove both of those classes. So it goes back to its initial styling. Great. So now we have to create these styles within our CSS. So within the CSS, I'm going to create a class called negative. And when the number is negative, I want to apply a different color treatment. So here I'm going to write color and set it to a particular color value that I already declared. And then I'm going to apply a very similar treatment for the positive case. So I'm going to modify the color here as well. So in my JavaScript, I have to call that function. So every single time that button is clicked, I'm going to call that counter style function and that will determine the color of the counter. So now if I tap on a minus, it goes to red. And if I tap plus, it goes to green. So the last thing I want to do is add a little bit more interactivity to this. So I want to add a bit of an animation when the color changes. So here after the color, I'm going to add an animation tag. So I'm going to create an animation called pulse, which will take place in 500 milliseconds with an ease in out curve. And then beneath this, I'm going to add that keyframe animation. So I'm going to write at keyframes and then write the name pulse. And then I'm going to specify the exact treatment that I want at each point throughout the animation. So at 0%, I want that transform scale to be one, but then I want to modify it at the 50% mark to be 1.2. And then at the 100% mark, I want it to go back to one. So this is basically going to slightly transform the scale of it. So that way it looks like it has a pop effect. So now if I tap on this plus, we can see that little pop effect. And when I go to a negative number, we also see that pop effect. So there you go. That's how I created this simple counter using HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. So just to review what I did first in the HTML, I included the basic elements that I needed for this project. I included an H1 to represent the counter, and then I included several buttons. In the CSS, I added some basic styling to everything and then applied styling for the actual buttons and then this counter. I also added these other classes to modify the color of this counter when it reached a particular value. In the JavaScript, I created these variables that represented the HTML elements, and then I added event listeners to the button. I also created an internal counter that modified its value depending on which button was clicked. And then I assigned the value of that count to the inner HTML of this H1 element. Then I also added a function to change the style of this counter depending on the value of it. 
So there you go. That's how I created this simple counter using HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.